Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jaime Yera, an integration engineer at CISDIC, and also a maintainer of the open source project from Get.io. Today, I'm here to talk about of different ways to take advantage of your useful information inside your logs and turn all of that into a proper metrics for your survivability systems. So let's get to it. The first question, why metrics from logs? Well, nowadays it's very common that we have an environment, a Kubernetes cluster, for example, and it's very common that uh, we are already instrumented that application, we make a port forward to some of things or done, and let's uh, type slash metrics and recover all that useful data. But sometimes we try to deploy some application that is not instrumented or don't have uh, any exporter either. And we try to make the same things, type slash metrics and recover the data and we can't find anything. But maybe the other reason is even with all the data inside our metrics, we can enrich all of that with information in our logs because we have the pike such size, the, we have the response code, source, destination IP, and we can turn all of that into metrics. Because pick up the information, make some operation in that log traces, and turn that into metrics. Um, in order to explain different ways to do that, um, we have to split the chalk in two contexts. The first one is a scraping loss from containers because it's a smaller one. For example, we have an Apache application that is gonna write its logs inside some volume, and we have to share this volume with a specific application that is gonna write these same logs and turn that information. In this case, we are gonna explain the Grog exporter uh, first of all, we configure the source of information. Uh, it's very simple. We have to deploy our Apache application and specify the volume that we want to share. Uh, and after that, we deploy our Grog exporter. Uh, the only two things we have to uh, apply here is the Grog configuration and the same volume that Apache logs are using for its logs, okay? So we have our logs in our application, and as you can see, we have th that information that we can take advantage of. And this is the final result that maybe we are looking for. We have our metric description, we have labels inside this metric, as we can see, we have the call or the method or the path that we are requesting. And Grok use a useful thing for that. That is patterns. As you can see, a simple log line here with the time series or the log level, and the rest of information in the log line. And we can use, in this case, pattern is another thing that is request expression but this expression could be very hard to read when we configure something. So in this case, Grok saved this information in some kind of label and for two reasons. The first one is easy to read and the other one is we can uh, use several patterns in order to create another one bigger. For example, Apache already have uh, several patterns and create another one for a whole trace line. And the other thing that we can make with this pattern is save it into labels. In this way, we can save our information in those labels and use it uh, after that for in order to build our metric. So the work configuration with this pattern is very simple. Um, as you can see, we have the pattern directory here. We will have 
all our regex expressions, save it in our labels, and obviously we can compose another patterns with these patterns already created and use it as we can see here in the metric session. We are gonna build this our metric and create it with these labels uh, method path. Who we can take this information is with the combined Apache log uh, pattern and maybe it's very crazy because we only have we only see this IP or host or user, but in the other side of the label, we have the information that we are saving. In this case, we can see this double brackets and verb request and response that already have in this pattern called combined Apache log. So using these patterns, we can recover the information and we can create this metric from the log information. So it's very simple to use the Grok exporter. And as I said, it's, it's very easy to configure the Grok exporter, very customizable. The metrics uh, are very custom. We can create from scratch. We can create our regex expressions, uh, assign this label, uh, this value to some label and create our own patterns. But obviously we don't have only the Grok exporter. We have another application that we can use um, for example, Google has the MJ. Um, it's kind of different because obviously return the information as a JSON or a Prometheus path. Um, use entail programs is more syntactic. We can have conditionals or constants, and we can reuse it. I won't explain how to call some example with MTEL, but only take into account that there is not only one choices for our context of work. The other context um, is a very common environment is scrapping from our cl uh, Kubernetes clusters. Uh, in this case, we won't read for any volume and we can use the Grog exporter. And obviously we are, we are uh, our environment is, our environment is a node Kubernetes cluster. We obviously deploy several applications because it's a common environment. And in order to write our logs, uh, we are gonna write from the standard output to a standard error. This way, Kubernetes will pick the information and uh, save it into the node log. This way, if some application uh, go off and go again, we save it the, the status, unless uh, it's evicted, of course. And maybe one of the applications that we can use for, for this case is uh, one application that is deployed in every node, as a daemon set. And for this example, we are going to use FluentD. Fluent is very easy to, go, to configure and deploy in our clusters. If don't want to make any specific configuration, we have our hem chart and with barely a few options, we can deploy uh, this application in our clusters. So as I said, with the Grok exporter, I have the shy result. In this case, this counter metric uh, with several labels uh, in order to get more information in our metric. And the source of information is this basic line of Nginx log. Uh, we have the, the, the method, we have the endpoint request, the agent, uh, timestamp, the AP source. But for this case, we only have, we only want to, to make the label for the method or path or status code. So as I said with Grog as Porter, um, FluentD obviously use regex expressions, but for that purpose, FluentD has something called plugins. Use plugins for everything, for reading the source of information, in order to filter that information, make some combination, or return that information in, in Prometheus or other patterns. So this is the kind of regex expression that has FluentD for an NGNS log, uh, log trace. Could be very, very scared at the beginning, but obviously we can select 
our specific values that we want for this case. As I said, the method or path or the status code for, for that reason. We only have to select this label for this case, for select the, the post method or recover the path with this yes expression. And we only, this status code, we recover uh, the va this value. So this is the syntax for, in order to retrieve information for any source. And as I said before, FluentD use an, an useful thing called the plugins. In this case, for the source recovery, we are gonna use the tail and the regress plugin. The first one is in order to read from the Kubernetes node. And the other one is uh, in order to use our regress expression. We only have to uh, locate our regress expression that we saw before in this context. And we have to tag this source of information with the tag we want in this case is nginx. This is very important because with deep tag, after that, we filter that information. We indicate that we are gonna use this filter for that log trace. And obviously, again, in this case, in order to turn that information in a Prometheus pattern metric, we use this already plugin created by the community for Prometheus. And after that, we create our custom metric for the information we recover for the log line. In this case, obviously, we have the name of the, of the metric. Uh, we say that it's a, a counter type metric, the description and the labels. As we can see here, between these dollar and, and braces, we have the method, path, and status code. That this is the same label that we have in the previous slide. And with this, we have the the metric we already create. It's very simple, as, as I see here with, with you, and it's the same. It's kind of similar to Grok because we are using the real expression, but obviously we have other tons of plugins because Fluentd has a great community and uh, it's increasing day by day. Um, in order to summarize a little bit Fluentd, um, it's Kubernetes native because it's very simple, as I said. Um, we have a Helm chart that we have value to configure in order to deploy in our clusters. Um, it, as we said, we deploy as a daemon set. So um, we have a log aggregation, very centralized. And talking about plugins is the more authentic or useful thing that have FluentD because it has a great community and have very uh, tons of plugins that we can configure for several sources or several return of information or many other filters. Obviously, in, for Kubernetes clusters, we only have, we don't have only FluentD, obviously. Um, in this case, the, the, uh, the same guys that build this FluentD are building right now uh, FluentBit. Well, right now it's already built it and it's increasing day by day. You don't have the same amount of plugins that have FluentD that is increasing day by day. Mm, we can select this kind of fluent bit for our context with low resources because it's the difference with, uh, with FluentD. Uh, you don't need the same memory that had the other. Obviously, we had to select between these this both applications. And obviously, there's another applications for in order to aggregate uh, log information. In this case, we have obviously Prontail. Uh, I let Prontail here, but it's not alone because need from Loki in order to recover information. Prontail uh, is deployed as an agent that recover all the information inside of our nodes, uh, aggregate all the labels uh, and send it back to, to the Loki main server. Um, it's very powerful. Maybe it's the difference between other aggregators is looking in the information, use labels for kind of uh, aggregate information and show it 
is uh, after that in Grafana, and is very powerful. Um, firstly, in order to uh, maintain the same thread for this talk, I already talked about Grog Exporter or or the Entail, FluentD or FluentD and Prontail for for Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I want to talk about that um, we have different choices for our context or our environments. We don't have to stick together with with one of them because uh, sometimes our context or environment changes and we have to know that uh, we have different application to choose and don't stick with one of them. So that's all, thank you.